Welcome back, everyone, to Huddle Up here on the Missouri Sports Network. We're excited to be here today. Hey, this Thursday, it starts out the college football season, excuse me, the college football week. And we're going to talk a little bit about Missouri Tigers and the Missouri State Bears. As you can see, I got my bear hat on right now. Uh, I'm not wearing a tiger hat. I don't care what you do. You couldn't pay me enough unless it hits six figures. Uh, with that being said, uh, we're going to jump into the Missouri Tigers right now. They struggled a little bit in their opener last week against La Tech. Uh, they did come back and put 52 on the board and it went in 52-24. Uh, Luther Burton, the St. Louis kid, a uh, five-star prospect, rushed, really didn't rush a lot, three three times with 26 yards. It's just very electric runs. Uh, and so Missouri struggled, and I was a little bit concerned that they would because I don't know what they're really trying to put together there at Mizzou. Uh, but they do sit here and they get a little bit of that Big 12 action coming up here in a couple of days when, uh, when they when they travel uh, to play the K-State uh, Wildcats. Gentlemen, let's open up the floor here uh, with Guy. And uh, thank you back here, back with us is Guy and, and DA and Austin. Uh, gentlemen, let's open up the floor. What do you think about Mizzou's game last week, and what do you think they'll do this week? Well, I think, one, I, they got to get Luther Bird in the ball, and I think that's, what, that's why he rushed the three times he did. They're going to hand it off to him because he's a playmaker. And I know he's just a freshman. But he's a guy you want to get your best athlete, the best guy that you have on your team. You want to get the ball in his hands, and they obviously weren't able to do it through the passing game. And I think you're going to see a lot more of that is getting him the ball in the backfield. They lose their their leading rusher from a year ago. They got to have somebody put yards on the on the board and touchdowns and ball in the end zone. And I think that's the guy that's going to have to do it for him, especially you know with what they lost from a year ago. And I was unimpressed. You know, they get a you know a twenty eight point victory. I am unimpressed with with Missouri. and I picked them at four and seven. You know, so I we'll see we'll see what happens. In Da. Yeah, uh, I'm a little perplexed on what to think, but I can tell you this: uh, being in the coaching world for 30 years, I did not want to ch- uh, bank my. Uh, postseason chances on my very first game, <laughs> if you know what I mean. So, um, you know, there's a lot of growth to be done. They've got some new faces. They've got some things to figure out. I still like the direction that the team is going. Um, you know, we learned a little bit about them last week. I think we'll learn a lot more about them this week uh, when they're playing a formidable, formidable uh, Big 12 foe and, um, you know, uh, former conference opponents. So uh, looking forward to this week, I think that will kind of give us a clue or an insight to what uh, the rest of the season may hold. Austin, yeah, you, I, uh, you... Sorry, go ahead. Go ahead, Austin. You're up, my friend. Okay, yeah, I think, uh, you know, they beat, beat a lot of tech, 52-24. They struggled kind of out of the gate, turned it around, uh, ended up winning that game pretty big. I think next week, I think it's hard, uh, kind of like DA said, uh, to go off your first game. Uh, you know, you have those those first games that some of them don't go well just because you know, rusty. You know, practice in a game is not the same thing. It, it's really not. It's two completely, completely different settings, re- regardless of how uh, well you run your practices. I think that this Saturday they're going to play K State and. You know, again, that's a former conference opponent. They've seen them a lot throughout the years. Uh, time will tell. K State coming off a win, thirty-four to nothing, a shutout win over South Dakota. So two teams coming off wins, and should be a good should be a good game on Saturday. Yeah, neither of your neither of your South Dakota team scored a touchdown this week. One of them, yeah, one of them playing K State, the other one playing Iowa. They didn't even, they didn't find the end zone at all out of the Missouri Valley Conference, but they still had good showing at <laughs> Iowa. Well, here's the problem I find, gentlemen, with Missouri is is that you, you gave up 24. Now, that's three that's three touchdowns and a field goal, uh, the conventional way. Um, and to me, you got to be able to control up front. I don't, Missouri should dominate a team like that. It should be one of those scores where you're completely dominated up front. You should not see that end zone three times, and you shouldn't be close enough to get there for a fourth one and have to end up with a field goal. That concerns me up front. What can the Tigers do to stop K-State, which had a pretty convincing 
uh, uh, zero win over South Dakota, even though it's an FCS school uh, and our conference in Missouri Valley, but they're still a very formidable opponent, and they shut them down. They did what they should have did. They put up 34 and gave them none. So I'm just a little bit concerned about Mizzou. I'm not backing off my six and five. We'll see what happens this week. Gentlemen, the other game a week ago that we all were locked into a week ago from today was Missouri State versus the Central Arkansas team. Missouri State pulled out a 27-14 win, but I'm telling you, they struggled. I watched it. They struggled. Um, and I'm a little bit concerned about what they have up front and and, and, and seeing how they're going to be able to dominate uh, the line of scrimmage, which I don't think they'll, they'll be able to this year. But, uh, uh, Austin, I'm not sure – how much uh, you like the Bears this year, but tell me what you think about them struggling to to dominate up front and get their running game going. Okay, first of all, sorry about that phone ringing right there. Um, but, yeah, I think that you've got to be able to protect your quarterback. I think you've got to be able to protect your running backs, and if you don't have a strong offensive line, then you can't do that. You can't do either one of those things. And uh, if you can't protect your quarterback, mo- most of the time you can't win games. So – I think that's something that they, again, it's their first game of the year, just like Mizzou, just like everybody. Uh, it's their first game of the year. You don't want to read a ton into it. I think that we're, we'll see a lot this weekend uh, against Tennessee Martin. But, um, yeah, I think, I think the offensive line is going to have to get stronger in order for them to be successful. Well, this is a team that beat them a year ago that ended their season. You know, a year ago, there's a revenge factor here. There's a game at home that's here. You've got a lot of new faces. I mean, I know Jason Shelley was still in the backfield a year ago in that last game of the year. He's gotten better. You've had Stetson Moore, uh, you know, to that tight end position. He, out of Liberty, he's a stud. He's a difference maker. This is number five versus number 14, you know, coming up later tonight. And, you know, I'm headed I'm headed down at 4 o'clock today because I'm going to be in Bearfest Village. You know, today I want to see that atmosphere. I want to know what's going on, and it's going to be exciting. And I know there's a there's an NFL game tonight, but there's no high school games tonight. There's nothing going on in 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 in, in Springfield, Missouri, Southwest Missouri. You need to be at this game. It's a Thursday night game. Let's pack it. It's number five versus number fourteen. This is this is the biggest game opening game game, home game that Missouri State played in thirty years. Sounds to me like Missouri State needs to hire a guy as a uh, uh, <laughs> promotions guy. Man, guy, you got me going now. He put on that, that was, was an audition tape, right? That was his audition yeah. tape, right there. Hired, hired. Get this guy on a payroll. No, I, I like it. There, there's a lot of excitement uh, around Missouri State football. And Johnny, we talked about this last week. Probably hadn't been this much since back when you were playing. Um, you know, especially this early in the season, it's kind of been, well, let's wait and really see what they're going to be like. And uh, I think everybody now is thinking, hey, this team's for real. Uh, they're going to be tested tonight. I mean, they are going to be tested. And uh, it's a good test right out of the gate. Um, they turn around and play Arkansas next week. You hope uh, that they're not looking toward that game with it obviously being a, a big money game, but more or less for the players, their chance to say, hey, I should have been D1. Um, you know, first home game, though, hopefully that gets them focused in. Uh, like Guy said, this is the team that put them out of the playoffs last year, and there's got to be a little bit of a revenge factor. Um, I like the Bears' chances. I do, too. And I know Tyron, uh, Tyron Scott uh, left the game a little bit. It looked like his ankle might have been banged up last week. Uh, but he, uh, before he left, he had eight catches for 160. He made it look easy. He made it look simple. Uh, and I can't go without letting this. I can't let the segment in without the big hit that Dylan Thomas put. I thought he killed the. I really thought that quarterback was going to have some serious, serious injuries to his head and facial tissues and things. Like, I'm not really sure. I, Da, I know your nose was messed up a couple weeks ago, and I, I can't really say it looks any better now. But that kid got hit hard. He got the wood taken to him. I mean, <laughs> buddy, he had a trip to the woodshed, and he did not come back. That was one of the hardest hits I've ever seen, and the, and the poor guy didn't even know he had it coming. Probably didn't he even, did. still doesn't know who hit him. He did. Well, he came back and played, though. I mean, it wasn't, I he didn't play that good, but it was – but I tell you what, man, the one thing I'll take away is that um, they got the victory 
They pulled out Jason Shelley as a stud. He made it play after play. I'm excited, guy. Uh, guy, do me a favor if you can. Make sure you cut this segment up. Get this real of you just being the pro bear person that you just were for the last <laughs> that, that minute and a half. Take it down to the Bear Fest Village and see if we can get it on the big screen, my friend. I guarantee you, you'll get a job. But no, we're all happy for the Bears. They played. They came. They did what they had to do. They came away to victory. They got the excitement level still in town, uh, and so we're excited to see what happens later on today over there at Plaster Stadium. So. The Tennessee Martin Skyhawks from the Ohio Valley out of Martin, Tennessee, will be in town later on tonight to take on the Bears. We'll come back and we'll wrap up the show here. Uh, features and uh, we'll talk about some of the small, fall sports that are capturing our attention here in Southwest Missouri. You're listening to Hold Up here on the Missouri Sports Network.